Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Mimi's Inspirational Spot. Um, I welcome you to the first day of March. Um, welcome. We're already, wow, wow. Three months in, three months into the year. I feel like it was just, just yesterday we were saying Happy New Year, right? Already three months in and moving forward. Praise the Lord. So welcome again to Mimi's Inspirational Spot. I am Muriel. I welcome you. Happy, happy, happy Wednesday, um, 1st of March. Um, thank God for life. Thank God for health. Thank God for strength. Um, even if right now you're listening to this in in a state of, of com um, compromised health, uh, you're still here, you're still alive. And I believe that God is able to heal you and deliver you from your illness. Amen. God is able to, God still heals and he still work his miracles. So I thank God for that. I thank God for you who are tuning in or who, is, or who are listening to this right now. So thank you. Thank you. I will, I'll be brief. I just wanted to come and share something with with you all as usual that bless my soul yesterday um i usually participate in a prayer line and yesterday um last night we were on the prayer line and there was um somebody on the prayer line that to me i felt was deliberately trying to disturb the line the the, the television was so high and Naturally, if you're online, you will hear when um, the, the request is being made to mute your phone to respect those that would be speaking or the activity that's taking place while, you know, on the line. So the person never did mute their phone. Eventually, um, the moderator, whomever that was able to do it, was able to mute um, our phones remotely. But what left it, the impression that left in my mind was simply this at times we we tend to think because of the grace of god we tend to think that we can get away with certain things we tend to, we tend to think that we can disrespect the word of the lord or things that are that are based on the true authenticity of god's spirit and we feel that we'll get away with it because the Lord don't strike us dead right away. Um, people, people lack fear of God because they feel like, well, nothing happened, nothing will happen. But what I, I'm here to tell you is, please do not position yourself ever, ever, ever in any shape or form to be a hindrance to the work of God or to be used by the the enemy of our soul demonic evil spirits to to um, serve as a way of sabotaging what God would inspire his people to do let us not forget an insult on God's people is an assault on God and that is facts when Saul, who later became Paul and would become the great one of the greatest champions of the gospel, when Saul was persecuting the church, when he had that encounter with God, when he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus, Jesus never said to him, hey, Saul, why are you persecuting my people? Jesus never said that. Jesus said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? Why are you after me? But Saul wasn't after Jesus. He was after to kill Jesus' disciples. But what Jesus was letting be known then and now is that an insult on my people, an assault on my the work that I commissioned them to do is an assault on me. So many times we as you know, as, as, as former, um, followers of Christ or, or people that are still in the faith and has some questions. Yes. Listen, I get it. Sometimes you will be in church and something will happen and it will leave you a little perplexed. Like, what was that? And you kind of stand on the fence of whether or not it was, it was inspired by the Lord or inspired by flesh. 
Did that did that word really came from God or was it, you know, my pastor was having a bad day and wanted to vent this morning? Is that, you know, is this activity, this program um, that is being put forth from the church, is it a resource for the saints or is it a um, is it something to serve a leader's ego? It is the fact we can't sugarcoat it. These things happen. But what I would encourage you to do is what we've known from the beginning of time. Our grandmammy taught, taught us that. Our mothers told us that. When we um, eventually grew up and become an adult, we've heard it in our um, adult life and in, in, in respected areas in our lives. If you don't have anything good to say, better you don't say it at all. Better you don't talk on things that you're unsure of. If you know that you know, then fine. And you have an opinion, you want to voice it, go ahead. And even then, I would dare to say, if the opinion is not coming from a good place to see change, then you're part of the problem. And no, I am not one of those people that feel that just because something is of the church, you should let it go, even if it's being destructive. No, I firmly believe that if you're a part of the body of Christ and you see something going on and you see something's wrong, you are to open your mouth, you are to speak up, you are to um, pray for a solution, you are to seek conferences with your leaders and find a solution to the problem. But what you are not to do and what I would encourage you not to do and fall into the trap of the enemy is become an instrument to hinder the work of God. And when you do that, what you're doing is, is positioning yourself for the hands of God to be on you. Because remember, the word of God says he shines his light both on the just and the unjust. So he sees both the good and the bad. And he is a rewarder of both the good and the bad. So if you're doing something right now and you know in your heart of hearts that you're trying to intentionally for whatever reason, whether you feel like, hey, you know what? I don't think this is for, truly from God. If you're really part of something that you think is really, really not of God and you and you do not see a way that you can bring it towards the light, then the um separate from that um mission separate from there don't stay there and serve as a persecution as a hindrance as a um um torment and factor for that ministry just separate go to another section of the body of christ and pray for the ministry continuously that it may see the light based on what revelation you may have. Excuse me. But do not position yourself because what you do is bring upon curse upon yourself. You know, sometimes we're busy praying and we're like, God, why am I going through this? Lord, why am I, my life is being, being, uh, um, turned upside down. My children are not, um, behaving the way they should. You know, my finances are not the way my, that my health is not good. And you're doing all of that. And it's because you're not doing what you're supposed to do for God. You're not doing right by God. You're positioning yourself and you're busy binding spirits and rebuking spirits and and those demonic spirits are just looking at you like i'm not the one inflicting this on you because you're you're persecuting god so yes there are times it is jesus that is knocking you off your high horse as he did with saul it is Jesus that is knocking you to the ground. Because right now, where you're positioned, you feel that you can handle the work of God. You feel that you could take it upon yourself to serve as a persecution for the work of God. And what you're calling the devil is really God telling you, hey, I need you to stop. I need you to be part of the solution and not the problem. 
And as we read in the Bible, Saul, who then later became Paul, became a great mighty force in the body of Christ. And if God has given you spiritual eyes to see in a problem, just think he may want to use you for the solution. But the solution is not you causing disruption. Remember, the Lord is not an author of confusion. God is a God of discipline and order. If you're functioning outside of discipline and order, you have to question if it's God. So I encourage you this morning. If you are serving part of a ministry and for whatever reason you're not satisfied, go into prayer and say, God, I see something that may not seem like it seems like it may not be from you. Give me the courage or guide me or give me revelation to bring it to my leader's attention. But do not serve as an instrument of sabotage. You will pay the price. You will pay the consequences. And this is not me speaking. It is the word of God. Saul, why are you persecuting me? Jesus said. Not why are you persecuting my people. Why are you trying to disrupt me? Not why are you just trying to disrupt a prayer line. Why are you trying to hinder me? Not why are you trying to hinder the church program. Why are you criticizing me? Not why are you criticizing the leader of the church. There is a thin line between constructive criticism and just destructive criticism. Be part of the solution and not the problem. And for those of you who are not actively doing something to hinder the work of God or sabotage a ministry, but for you that God has called you to do something God has revealed to you, hey, there's a weak area in this church or there's a weak area in this ministry. I want you to do this. I want you to go and talk to the leader about this. I want you, listen, the Lord does not only reveal um, change or re give revelation to leaders. As long as you're part of the body of Christ, as long as you are, your hand is on the plow, with the leader, God can give you revelation for the vision. So if God has given you a revelation, if God has instructed you to go forth and do something as part of the being of um, connected to the vine and um, being part of the body of Christ, I would encourage you to do it because not doing it is a form of sabotage. Not doing it is a form of sabotage, not obeying and going forth and, and, and saying or doing what God has instructed you to do. You know what, God, I'm, I'm not going to give to the church because you know what? I don't like the way they treated me, but the Lord told you to give for that mission. You know what, God, I know that I have a talent to sing, but I just don't like their attitude and I'm not going to go. I know I know that I can help this ministry, but I, I'm not going to do it because I just don't like the way they stay. You're hindering the work. Because God has given you the talent, has shown you an area to exercise that and you're not doing it. Well, Lord, you know what? I'm not going to go and preach to these people because, first of all, they're always mocking you. And when I'm talking to um about God, when I'm talking to them about you, they're always sucking their teeth and rolling their eyes. You know what? I'm not going to. Your word is too good to, to, to be preached to them. Really? God told you to go. What you are doing is hindering the work of the Lord. Sabotaging. The vision that God has given you. And thus hindering the kingdom of God. And remember. I gave the example of how Saul was persecuting the church. But thought it was the church. But it was really God. Jesus took it personal. Right? 
So I'll give you an example of when God is telling you to go forth and be the be that instrument, be that positive effect on the church and, and the body of Christ. Be that voice, hallelujah, that brings about change and repentance. And when you don't do it, you become like Jonah. When God revealed to Jonah to go to the city and to preach the gospel, that the people of that city would repent, Jonah didn't want to do it. Jonah just felt within himself. He felt that he felt within himself that he, those people didn't deserve to repent. They didn't deserve God's grace. It was listen, Jonah became um judge, jury, and executioner. Jonah said, nope. I have judged they're not good enough. I've come to the conclusion. And you know what? They deserve to die. I'm not going. And God had to show Jonah that wherever he went, until he did what he was supposed to do, he would be a curse to those around him. Things would not go well for him. We saw that when he went was on the boat. And the winds came and the boat almost capsized. And everyone on the boat was like, who is bringing this accursed weather? Who is bringing this bad, bad um, aura around us? There are many people in your life right now. They're suffering because of your disobedience. Your children, your husband, your wife, your family, your finance. These things are suffering because you are choosing to disobey. You are choosing not to do what God has called you to do. Because you think you know better. I'm not going to go and preach to these LGBTQ community people. Because you know what? They're not good enough anyway. Who are you? God loves them. Jesus loved them. Jesus' whole purpose in coming is to help that community. It's to, it's to love on them. Who are you to think that they're not worth your time? Or you know what? I'm not going to go in and feed the poor because you know what? They shouldn't have been drinking, lost their job, and end up in the street. Who are you? Follow, stop hindering. Listen to me. Stop hindering the work of God. Stop sabotaging the work of the Lord. You are bringing about curse on your life for no reason. And then you're going to seek prayer and seek to um, um, go to obias and witchcraft, um, witch doctors to cur um, break curses off of your life. When all you need to do is repent and obey. You don't need a demon cast out of you. You don't need um, the um, an anointed oil all over your home. You just need a repented heart. And a, a obeying will. They had to throw Jonah off that ship. They had to throw Jonah off that ship. And Jonah had to go three days. In the belly of, the fish, of a fish. So he could end up exactly where God wanted him to be. So he can deliver the message that God wants him to deliver. So what am I saying to you saints this morning? It's plain. Whether you are intentionally going against the work of the Lord. Or whether God has given you a work and you're not doing it. Either end of the spectrum. You are hindering the body of Christ. Don't do that. Don't allow God to cut you from the vine because you refuse to bear good fruit. You're connected, but somehow you're just refusing to take from the sap to bear the good fruit. Bear good fruit today. Bear good fruit today. 
Don't listen to people. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say it at all. And if God, and if you do have something good to say, pray for guidance and then go forth and say it. Whatever you do today, choose to push forward the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't wake up in a side of violence this morning. Right? My daughter sometimes usually say, depending on what I'll say to her in the morning, she's like, oh, so you woke up. And you chose violence, you know? Don't wake up and choose violence against the body of Christ. Don't do it. Wake up and say, you know what? Today I'm going to be an instrument for good. I'm going to be an instrument for good. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God cover you. May the grace of the Lord be with you always. And remember, Jesus loves you. And so do I. And so do I. And if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know the love of God, if you don't know that God sent his only begotten son, that whomsoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You don't listen. You don't have to be suffering the way you are. You don't have to be living in, in the darkness that you are in, not knowing who you are, where you come from, what's your purpose. Jesus can show you who you are. Jesus can bring you to the light. Jesus can give your life meaning and purpose. I promise you. I promise you, my friend. Take it from someone who's been there and done that. I promise you. God can bless you with mental health. God can bless you to be healthy psychologically. He can bring you out of darkness and into the light. All you have to do is receive him. All you have to do is open your heart to him. Don't hinder him, his work from operating in your life. And if that's you today, say, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, I want to, I want to be part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come into my life. I receive the free gift of salvation. I, I repent of my sins. I confess that I am a sinner and I need you, Savior. And come into my life. I thank you and I receive salvation today in Jesus' name. And I'll never be the same. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, my friend, welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome. 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 Now go to a Bible believing church. Connect with saints of like mind and start your beautiful journey into the light and psychologically and mental health. And remember, Jesus loves you and so do I. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Love you all. Bye bye.